Hi, I'm Beckme Berserker and welcome back to my channel, the place where we discuss, in my opinion, the most complete version of the Dungeons & Dragons game ever published. One of the subjects that frequently comes up in the comments of my videos is spellcasting in the Beckme game, specifically the power of the spells themselves. The Beckme magic user's power is legendary, although it is widely acknowledged that they can be a bit of a glass cannon, that is if you are able to corner one. Running away is a worthwhile and frequently used tactic in Beckme, death is but a dice roll away, so you had better have as much stacked in your favour as possible before gambling with your life. When it came to magic users, they didn't stick around if things weren't working out. But how powerful were Beckme spells in actuality? Well to find this out, I will of course have to do a comparison with some of the current 5th edition versions of a number of spells. So I'll choose 5 low level favourites that have a strong legacy in the Dungeons & Dragons game and put them side by side, and we should be able to see what the difference in power is, and how things have changed in the intervening years since Beckby's heyday in the 80s. Now before I continue, I'm going to do something I usually reserve for the end of the video, and that is to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. Don't do it yet, see if you like my video first. If you don't, then perhaps I don't deserve your subscription. If you do like it, then it would be great to have you here more often. Right, back to the main event. First, I need to explain some differences to both spellcasting and spell descriptions between the Beckme and 5th editions, so that descriptions unfamiliar to you can make sense. In Beckme, the rules state that a spellcaster must be able to gesture and speak normally to cast a spell. While casting a spell, the character must remain in one place and concentrate. Each spell typically is cast on the spellcaster's go in the round of combat. There are no bonus actions or reactions, so all spells are deemed to happen as the same type of action, if that makes sense. Only one spell may be cast per round. In 5th edition, apart from the addition of bonus actions and reactions, there is the inclusion of spell components, which are made up of verbal, somatic, meaning gestures, and material, meaning a physical item is needed sometimes called a spellcasting focus. This forms some kind of prescribing of physical action required by the spellcaster, rather than the looser language used in Beckme. Furthermore, 5th edition also includes spell schools, such as conjuration, abjuration, etc. Spell schools are absent from Beckme, although spell descriptions can make use of the words conjure, divine, transmute, etc. Looking at the information heading a spell description in Beckme compared to one in 5th edition, we can see the following. A Beckme spell typically has only four features, the name of the spell, its range, its duration, and a summary of its effect. Meanwhile, below its title, a 5th edition spell will include the school of the spell, its casting time, as this may be longer than one round, its range, its required components, and its duration. Any reference to the effect is found in the main body of text. In addition, a 5e spell may include information pertaining to improving the power of a spell through the possibility of casting it at a higher level, or spell slot. This is not possible in Beckme. There is also one more difference between Beckme and 5th edition that needs to be acknowledged when considering the power of these spells. In 5th edition, you have a lot more hit points than in Beckme. A 10th level fighter in Beckme would have a maximum of 101 hit points, whilst in 5e, this would be 150. A 20th level fighter in Beckme could have 121 hit points, but in 5e they might have 300, almost 60% more hit points. Although this video won't apply the mathematical balancing of this fact from spell to spell, I have at least brought this to your attention to consider as we move forward. So with these facts noted, let's start our comparison. The first has to be our old favourite, Magic Missile. Putting these side by side we can see the immediate obvious differences. In Beckme, the range of Magic Missile is 150 feet, compared to 120 feet in 5e. Interestingly, the duration in 5e is instantaneous, compared to one round in Beckme, meaning in Beckme, a Magic user could cast it ahead of the round in which it needs to be deployed. For any Beckme wizards out there, I'd love to know how you make this work in your own games. Now let's get into the actual effect of the spell. The first thing to note is that in Beckme, a first level spellcaster would just get one missile to fire, compared to three in 5e. In addition, the damage dice is different between editions. In Beckme, it is a seemingly more powerful 1d6 plus 1, whilst in 5e it is 1d4 plus 1. So with Magic Missile automatically hitting in both editions, 
At first level, a Beg Me Magic user may do a maximum of 7 hit points of damage, but a 5e wizard may do a maximum of 15, 5 per missile. A big difference. But wait a minute. Magic Missile does interesting things as the spellcaster's power increases. In 5th edition, a wizard may effectively cast their spells at a higher spell level if available, to make them more powerful. Something that is not possible in the rules as written in Begmi. The 5e Magic Missile allows for one extra missile to be fired for each spell slot above level 1. This potentially means 8 additional Magic Missiles when using Magic Missile with a 9th level spell slot. Added to the 3 already had at 1st level, this makes a potential total of 11 Magic Missiles, resulting in a minimum damage output of 22 hit points and a maximum of 55. Ouch! However, this would require the spellcaster to be at least 17th level. But Beckme's magic missile power also increases as the magic user grows in power. The difference is that they gain two more missiles for every five levels of experience above first. So at sixth level they would have three missiles, eleventh they would have five, and at sixteenth they would have seven. That seems like a good place to compare, so let's see what the damage output would be. Seven Beckme magic missiles would result in a minimum of 14 points of damage, and a maximum of 49. So on the surface, the 5e version of the spell seems more powerful. However, consider this. The Beckme spellcaster's magic missile is still considered a first level spell. Therefore, they have not had to use a higher level spell slot to potentially achieve 49 points of damage. Also, at 16th level, a Beckme magic user can memorize five first level spells, Therefore, they could potentially memorize Magic Missile five times and still have all their high level spells available. So in the balance, looking at the spell at 16th level for Beckme and 17th level for 5th edition, although the 5e version of the spell is clearly more powerful at low levels, I think the Beckme version just edges this overall, mainly due to it still remaining a powerful first level spell. Agree or disagree? It would be great to know your thoughts on this. Ok, let's leave Magic Missile behind and visit the other favourite first level spell, Sleep. Wow, the range of a Beckme Sleep spell is 240 feet. That is huge compared to just 90 feet for the 5th edition. Both spells cover a 40 foot square area, but look at those durations. 4 to 16 turns for Beckme. If you didn't know, a turn in Beckme is 10 minutes, so this translates to 40 to 160 minutes, potentially almost 3 hours. The 5th edition version is just a single minute. There's a massive power difference right there. Ok, so let's have a look at how many get affected. Neither spell allows a saving throw, and in Beckme, the number of victims is determined by rolling 2d8 to obtain the number of hit dice, or levels, the spell affects. Hmm, so it could be that this seemingly grand spell affects 2 orcs, or 16 orcs, randomly determined, as orcs in Beckme have 1 hit dice each. However, no monsters with more than 4 plus 1 hit dice will be affected, or characters of 5th level or higher. The 5e version uses a similar method, but does so by rolling against the hit points of victims to a maximum of 5d8 worth of hit points, so potentially 40 hit points worth of victims. Sounds great, but remember 5th edition creatures have more hit points, so using the example of orcs again, the 5e monster manual has these as having an average of 15 hit points each because they have 2 hit dice. To put just two asleep, you would need to roll at least 30 or more on 5d8, which would be a much higher than average roll. In Beckme, you would achieve two orcs as a minimum. That said, the 5e version of sleep includes the option to cast a more powerful version of the spell by using a higher spell slot. So let's jump to the highest level and see what happens. The 5e sleep description offers an impressive extra 2d8 worth of hit points for each spell slot above first. So accounting for the initial 5d8 at first level, a 9th level sleep spell could affect 21d8 hit points of creatures. That's a maximum of 168 hit points. With no maximum powered creature this sleep spell can affect, that's actually quite impressive, albeit a 9th level spell. But let's go back to the orcs. 168 divided by 15 rounds to 11, so a 9th level sleep spell in 5th edition can only put a maximum of 11 orcs to sleep at a range of 90 feet for a maximum duration of 1 minute. The Begme version can put a maximum of 16 orcs to sleep, at a range of 240 feet, for a maximum duration of 2 hours and 40 minutes, whilst remaining a first level spell, being cast by a first level magic user. I don't know about you, 
but a Begbie Magic user with a sleep spell is about one of the scariest things you'll come across at low level. Okay, let's move on to another spell. One of my favourites, Hold Person. In Begbie there are two versions of this, the Cleric version and the Magic user Elf version. For Clerics this is a second level spell, whilst for Magic users and Elves it is a third level spell. In 5th edition, Hold Person is a second level spell. Okay, so let's compare them. Well, straight away you can see that the Begmi versions differ in range and duration. The Cleric version looks to be more powerful with a range of 180 feet and a duration of 9 turns, or 1.5 hours. The Magic user version has a shorter range at 120 feet, and what looks like at first glance a much shorter duration of 1 turn per caster level, although once a Magic user reaches 10th level and above, the duration begins to far exceed the Cleric's version, justifying its 3rd level power rating. For example, an 18th level magic user's whole person spell lasts 3 hours. The 5th edition version of this spell is what's referred to as a concentration spell, lasting up to a minute. However, this is far from guaranteed. Although a saving throw is allowed to avoid the effect of this spell in both editions, in 5e this saving throw may be repeated every round by the victim. Potentially meaning, assuming it worked in the first place, that the victim may only be paralysed for 6 seconds. I don't know about you, but I don't know why anyone would bother. In Begmi, the whole person spell may affect up to four victims, and if you decide just to target one, the victim gets a minus two to their saving throw, presumably because they face the full force of it. After that, they are paralysed for the full duration, no more saving throws. That's powerful stuff. In 5th edition, we once again see the opportunity to increase the power of the spell by using a higher spell slot. Where the Begmi version affects a maximum of four victims, the 5e version affects only one, but may affect another victim for every spell slot used above second, so a potential eight victims if cast as a ninth level spell, but it may only last six seconds. Hmm, I know which one I'd rather have in my back pocket. The power balance is clearly favouring Begmi at this point, but let's have a look at one that is a protective spell rather than an offensive one. Mirror Image. This is a second level spell in both Beckme and 5e. Looking at the range and duration we can see that the 5e version lasts a minute, whilst the Beckme version lasts 6 turns, or an hour, allowing it to be cast in anticipation of danger. The Beckme version of the spell creates 1d4 mirror images of the caster, whilst the 5e version states a specific number of 3, so on average the 5e version would have more images than the Beckme version. However, any hit made to the Beckney spellcaster is automatically applied to one of their mirrors, causing it to disappear. This means that a Beckney spellcaster may cast a mirror image and potentially avoid 100% of the damage against up to 4 attacks before the spell is broken. The 5e version differs slightly, with a 75% chance of a duplicate being hit instead of the spellcaster when 3 images are present. This being reduced to 70% chance when 2 images are present, and a 50% chance when only left with one image. Inverting these figures there is a 25% chance, 30% chance and then 50% chance of hitting the 5e spellcaster. I know which I prefer to be casting, but what about you? What do you think? Let's finish with the most classic D&D spell of them all, Fireball. Another big difference in range here, 240 feet in Begmi and 150 feet in 5e. Both have the same duration of instantaneous, obviously. Both fireballs cover the same area, a 20 foot radius. In 5th edition, the damage dealt is 86 on a fail save, but an additional 1d6 damage may be made for every spell slot used above 3rd, up to a maximum of 14d6 as a 9th level spell. Fireball is available to 5th level wizards, so 8d6 at 5th level is not bad at all. In Beckme, a fireball is also available from 5th level to magic users and elves, However, the damage a fireball does is 1d6 per caster level on a failed save, so a 5th level caster would do just 5d6 points of damage. They would have to be 8th level before being able to do 8d6, but clearly you can see how this ramps up. A 5e wizard could only achieve a 14d6 fireball at 17th level, and then only by expending a 9th level spell. At 17th level, a Beckme Magic user's fireball would do 17d6 damage, at the expense of just a third level spell. Clearly more powerful. In fact, there's a rule in Beckme that no spell is allowed to do more than 20 dice worth of damage. As you can imagine, a 36d6 fireball from a maximum level magic user would just be the end of things. Well, those are five low level spells that we have compared, 
and it's clear that spells in Beckme and similar old school games are a lot more powerful than in 5e. Did they break the game? No. If anything, they caused players to have enormous respect for magic and ensure they valued any magic users in their party. When things are going wrong in Beckme, it's time to press the big red button called Magic User and watch the fireworks. Great fun. Conversely though, it's why the magic user has the biggest target on his back, which is why a magic user never turns it to an enemy. Magic users are paranoid for a reason. Just don't annoy one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick comparison exercise. I know it's full of confirmation bias, but sometimes it's worth carrying out these little experiments and knowing for sure, rather than just suspecting. I'm not sure what might be gained by exploring this with higher level spells, but if it's something you want to see, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm Beckme Berserker. Hopefully I've earned your subscription. Keep making your saving throws, especially against Beckme spellcasters, and I hope to see you back here soon.